right, here's part six. All right, here's part six. As you can tell, the engine's out. But part six is not about the engine. It's all about power steering and deep power steering and the rack mounts. So if you can get through all that, get to the good stuff, get to the engine stuff. Right, Amber? <laughs> Oh, we have no bump steer, by the way. I get the rack working really good. So, keep watching. A note to self, always take the outer tie rods off first, because once they're off, once you take this pinion out, you can't take the pie rods off. And get this back in, it's really hard. I even took out all the jam nuts and everything, and took out all these balls and this tensioner thing. It is really hard to get back in. I got it back in once. I had to like use the bolts to suck it in gently. So it's like does not want to go back in. The shaft moves freely. But uh, I can't get the shaft out either. Check this out. Just spraying fluid everywhere. <laughs> it's just comical. Uh, I think it's just a flipping mess. I got this aluminum nut completely off. Oh god, don't go back in. Yeah, that's off. The shaft. Does it come out? I don't know what the hell. Maybe it's gotta go out the other way? I don't know. So if it's gotta go out the other way, that means I gotta take out this nut. That means I gotta put the pinion back in. Can't get the pinion to go back in. Really flipping finicky. The house was put this thing back together. Is it upside down? Is it that way? Oh, oh, oh my god. Do you see that? I don't know if you saw that. It just popped right in. Maybe it was upside down. I don't know. Okay. Now, put it back in the vise and take it apart. Well, these things aren't even that tight. That lock washer really does something. They're just like, just I wouldn't say snug, but <laughs> they're not that tight. The lock washers really must be needed. Okay, so I got both. I think these are like the original tie rods. They look pretty nasty. Inner tie rods. I want to see if the Nissan Versa ones screw in here. That's the only other ones I have extra laying around. I had one from the Armada years ago, but I threw that away when I bent one. I'm gonna double change these. Okay, oh thank god that thing is finally out. Now does the shaft come out? Oh, Alright, time to take this apart. I watched a couple of videos on this and obviously I'm doing it in the wrong order. Pinion out again. This could come out this time this way? I'm gonna spray oil again. Oh my god. Ooh. It still doesn't want to come out. Yeah, all the holes are unplugged. Is there a lock washer somewhere? There was nothing else. There's nothing else to take apart on this thing. Oh god. Let's go up the other way. Let's go up this way. Ooh. No, nope. This thing does not want to come apart. How does this stupid thing come apart? All these videos never showed me how to get this damn thing apart. I gotta get that vacuum seal out. How does this thing come apart? There's seals on the end. Oh! Gives like a vacuum seal on? I don't know. Oh yeah, the piston has to, it has to go down because there's a big piston on it. So it has to go down. It can't go out the other way. It has to go this way. So there's a flipping ring in the middle. So it has to go this way. It has to. Oh my 
I got it. I got it. Oh, I got it apart. Yeah, so you got to beat on this with a flipping hammer. Oh, good, it didn't do any damage to threads. So that's the special tool you need. Oh, here's the Teflon seal gone. Done with the slice. Got a hose, oh, a whole ring, and a Teflon. Thing. And now, <laughs> there we go. I think I'm finally fifty percent done. Ah. Oh. Call it a day on this thing. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, I still gotta take this thing apart, I think. So I can grease it. I have no idea how this comes apart. Must be a snap ring or something. Oh, and this mess. I gotta get that clip out of there somehow. Actually, is that even removable? That looks like a one piece deal. That's not a removable clip. No, that's not a pop-off. There's no break. All right, I give up. That bearing doesn't come off. I think it's got to come out of the shaft somehow. Just like the other one, you got to beat the hell out of it, I guess. Where's the hammer? Oh, I got it. Ah, there's the bearing in there. Okay, so yeah, I just beat it on here. Put this in the vise. Beat it on here with a piece of wood. And uh, so there's a bearing there. This looks like, that just made look a lot of plastic. Search fab, there's the snap ring. So take that one out. Maybe I have my pliers. Get rid of all these O-rings. And I'll just have a bearing. Maybe the bearing will come off. Almost done. All right, so I got off the snap ring. So then this thing comes off, and there's a seal, which I think I could discard. And then there's a washer, and there's the bearing. So I think I can just leave it like that. That's the way Urchfab did. And I could weld it. He did weld it, or we didn't weld it, and it worked. I don't know. I think I can. Uh, some people weld these, some people leave them alone. Maybe I'll just put it all back together. Just glue that bearing. That bearing come off now. Bearing's nasty. Maybe I will just put it back together with the O-rings off. Cause that thing is obviously keyed. So it goes in. It does lock, but I guess it's not gonna do any good. There's not gonna be any oil in there. So if I put it in or don't put it in, I'll just leave it out. Drive it and see. Supposedly this shaft and this shaft was like a torsion thing. There's a little bit of slop. So you weld it. I can see right there the splines. I thought I could have swore that was flush earlier. But uh, I think I'm just going to clean that bearing and repack it. And, ah, I think I'm finally... Put it back together. Without those, that's the stuff I'm leaving out. Plus the stuff I threw in the trash. I got out the seal and the bearing. I had to use my press. Basically, I used a socket that was the same size as this inside, and it was. I was hitting it first with a hammer, and it wasn't moving. So I used a press because you're basically had a press on the seal, which is not ideal. But it worked. I pressed the seal and the bearing right out. So now I'm officially 50% <laughs> done with this thing. Uh, well, I got our 50% apart. Now I gotta clean it, weld it, put it back together. Oh, I think I'm gonna go do something else. 
I got shot in the arm. You can see right here. There we go. That was a pain in the butt to cut those off. I just got to weld them up and paint them. I just finished cleaning everything. Oh, you can actually see the bearing now pretty good in there. I, uh, basically, I cleaned that with uh, compressed air. I soaked everything in some uh, what is it, like kerosene or something, cleaning fuel. And uh, got all the parts pretty clean, the bearings clean. Basically, with uh, compressed air. There is some pitting on the shaft. But it's not too bad. So I just put the dash back in for the first time since the steering column is done. So in theory I could put on the collar here and try to figure out how to hide this. I do need to take this lever off. I can actually just whip this lever off now, chop it down size, put it back on. Let's see how it is. I need to make a make a little filler plate like two inches or something, just kinda hide this ugliness. I don't know, but then I got that lever in the way, but I also need to make a center console, so I think that lever's going to go away eventually. And I could even get rid of this, but I did get, I think I have all the bolts in. Uh, oh, jeez. Just lean on the cab when it moves. Um, I need to get those body mount bushings ordered. Yeah, I got all the bolts in. All the bolts. It's just kind of finger tight. But, uh, yeah, so I can actually... I left these. I can probably trim these down once I figure out how I'm gonna mount to this to go across. A piece of sheet metal or plastic or whatever. I need to uh, touch this up again. I need to finish welding the uh, seat belts. Forgot about these. Uh, I need to do another little tack, fill up some holes, and grind that down smooth and primer that. I'm not gonna worry about the floor. My Dell floor plans <laughs> temporary. I'm trying to find a brand that makes them. I heard a rumor that there's a company that makes floor pans called Redux or something, but I can't find them on the internet. So if you know where to get floor pans, let me know. This one is actually worse than I thought. Uh, okay, I put the stock idler arm and tie rod back on. I took out the torsion bar, so now it's a full droop. You can see it's touching the bump stops. So now you can actually see the range of motion. Pull left, pull right, pull left, pull right. It comes extremely close to the sway bar. Um, but more importantly, I wanted to test bump steer. I want to see if there's any bump steer stock before I start changing things. There's a uh, bottomed out. You can see the idler arm is not moving. Okay, so there's no bump star. No movement at all on the tie rod. Inch and a half down, five and a quarter over. Inch and a half down. Put a little epoxy in the holes. Uh, it looks, uh, I got it on both sides. That should work. All right, so I'm cutting out a plate from my new cross member. Just using the power steering box to get the holes correct. It's like 85 millimeters apart. I'm gonna make two of these. I think this is five inches long. Yeah, five inches. This will drop the cross member down. Okay, so the hardest part of fabrication is making two things exactly the same. So what I did is I clamped the first piece of steel I made that I just showed you. Another one, I've marked a line, I'm going to cut that. And I drilled two holes through both of them. I drilled the first one. Now I can enlarge them out to the correct size. I think they're 10 millimeter. And I got one good factory cut edge that I'm using as the front of the brackets. That'll be the front of the truck. And the rest of this will be cut or welded or whatever. Massage down the match. 
Ideally, the cross member will be something like this. Two bolts in the frame, drops down and mounts from here to the top of the rack. The rack will be like way over here. So there'll be other brackets that go off to that. This is just the cross member. But if that causes bone steer, remove this down until there's no bone steer. Again, this is just a mock-up tab. This may not be the final thing. I give me a chance to move the rack around anywhere I want until I get rid of bump steer. I kind of did this when I did a rack and pinion on the conversion to a go-kart. And I got rid of the bump steer by just moving it around until it's found a sweet spot. There they go. They fit. Amazing. So now. Grab. Got two brackets. Ugly as can be. Okay, so this is how this rack's gonna go. This is all cleaned up. <clears throat> so it's gonna kind of go somewhere in this area. There's the cross member. Just friction holding it right now. It's gonna go something like this. This pinion's gonna go kind of straight up. Maybe lean to the front a little bit. And so that means that this mount is going to go on the back. So I'm going to need something like this to connect the cross member over to <coughs> this thing. So um, I think I can make a circle out of that. I think it's going to be mounting. <coughs> I think it's going to end up being mounted something like that goes on there. It's going to stay on the end. I just don't know what angle yet, so I wish I could weld it permanently, but no idea what it's going to look like when it's done. I don't know what angle it's going to be. It's got to do something to mock it up. <clears throat> Obviously, I can move the cross member up and down. I can go forward and back a couple inches, up and down a couple inches. Just hope I don't have any bumps steer. If not, I've got to shorten this rack, which is supposedly doable, which I don't understand how this comes off. But <clears throat> hopefully we'll not have to shorten the rack. So uh, let's just make a mount and bolt it on and put the steering together and see what it looks like. That's all I can do. I don't know how to do the math any other way. <laughs> that worked out nice. So I just bolted that. That simulates the mount in the uh, frame. Originally it was in the Miata like this, kind of a slight angle like that, and this was going up to the rack. So I don't think I'm going to be able to aim this right at the rack. I think that cross member, uh, the motor mount is in the way. So I'm going to have to tilt it up. So uh, my idea was to kind of cut this tube mount in there, something like that. I think it will work. Um, I don't know where. I'm seriously thinking about just getting like my tranny jack, putting it right here, and putting a block of wood on the top of the tranny jack, and just somehow connect this to the tranny jack solidly so I can make it up and down, lefty righty, test some steering angles. I don't know if that's more work or not than just welding up this cross member. Giving it a shot. I don't know. Just roll it up those holes. I think that looks good. Set that down. Got the mount up. Okay, I just found some better steel. Some scrap steel. So I'm going to use this instead. Since the chances are this is going to be mounted. I had some thicker stuff and I was going to cut a round, cut it in a circle. I had the right, like a two inch hole saw. It was right this contour, but it was still too wide. So I like this better. This will fit in there nicely. I I could taper this down to an angle. So I think I'll go ahead and make these. Okay, I think I found a way to get rid of this seal inside this rack. It wasn't easy, but I found a piece of tube that was the right outside diameter. Because there's not much of a seal to push on. I tried to beat it out with a hammer, but it wasn't easy. It's 
Now I'm trying to push it out the bottom. I have no idea how far. Or if this shaft is even long enough. But a lot of resistance, but it's pushing on that seal. Oh no, I hope I have another piece of tube. I'm running out of stroke on my jack. Alright, I got it all back together. That was a pain in the butt. Got these things epoxied. Got these things welded. Oh, this stupid nut stripped out on me when I put it back on. That was kind of stressful. Thought I was going to have to. Alright, see that little din right there? You got to remove that with a grinder or like a file because you won't be able to put that aluminum nut back on. I didn't notice that until I was watching this video, but I had a hard time getting that nut on. And then I think I saw it again in somebody else's video. That's a factory way of uh, making the nut a lock nut so it doesn't unscrew. They intentionally dent the tube. So that's how the factory does it. Uh, the Nissan does the same thing. So anyways, you got to do that before you try to put that aluminum nut back on. Junk this thing. But I cleaned out the threads and I finally got it back on. I busted out that seal. I couldn't get it back in. Here's the seal that was in there. So, but it's good. And I can turn it by hand. Still pretty snug, and I just kind of tighten that down not that much. The preload two and a quarter sticks out a little bit more than two and a quarter, uh, is the center. So, oh, I'm covered in grease, looped it all up really good. I left out a bunch of parts. Hopefully, it's good. I got these brackets all wire wheeled, ready to weld. I gotta put them back on again. Oh, that was a lot of work. So now I've got to make a tie rod, the length of the 521 tie rod. So i got to cut this down to length. Might as well use these things. I'm dying to see if the Nissan Versa inner tie rod screws in there. Really curious. And by the way, this is hardened. I was thinking to shorten this. I read you can just cut this tube, like cut this tube here, sleeve it back together, leave the threads on the end, cut the shaft, and then retap it. But this appears to be hardened. So, uh, there's a hole right there. Just... Alright, so I got my first batch of brackets or whatever, my prototype. I'm going to go down four inches and in the center. I'm going to weld this cross member on. I've already got a cut and sanded. So, front, top. Got lots of extra room to chop off later if I don't need it. So, weld in. Let's weld in this. And we'll be done with the cross member. Also, I decided to remove an inch and a half out of the stock Mazda inner tie rod. I'm going to use these for mock-up. They fit the truck, they fit the rack, so I've already cut the other one. Just need to weld it back together. Okay, I got my cross member all sharpied up, bolted on. Clamped the block on each side. On my, I think it was a four inch line from the top. Got to start somewhere. I'm just gonna hopefully I cleaned up this old bar. Hopefully this will just sit on top of there. I'll tack it on, a pretty good tack, because that's gonna hold the weight of the sway bar while I cycle the suspension. Let's see, is it even level? I need to get one of those digital levels. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much zero. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, that's a good sign. It's a good sign. All right, let's weld something. Okay, I'm making my first tie rod. Chopped out an inch and a half. Mock up. I went ahead and notched out a corner out of these or a center. So I think I'm gonna weld them on just like that. Try to get them nice and straight. That's gonna be fun. But the rack is on flat. This one can move around, but just need to weld that to that, that to that, and then I'm going to clamp this to the cross member. So, just going to chop that little notch. Try to do this without melting the rubber. Just need a little tight. That looks better. That should hold it nice and level. Uh, I think so. Okay, I got the rack clamped in. The rack is close to being centered. 
the brackets are not, but don't worry about that. <clears throat> so uh, I've got a touch in the brackets on each side. It looks like the center of the rack is like the center of the frame. Yeah, I need to go over a little bit to the left. Um, but that's pretty close, so I need to move it over here. I need to double check the centering, but I think I'm going to throw in my one and only correct size tie rod. Let's see what it looks like. But yeah, there's tons of room around everything. Pretty happy with this. Let's flip over. Oh, sucks working upside down. So, oh man, those brackets are just a quarter of an inch higher than the oil pan skid. So it probably should go up higher. Let's see if we got bumps here. That's a million dollar question. Okay. So I just need to shorten the tie rods, but that's kind of what it looks like. It's pointing right at the uh, steering box location, which is kind of the plan. Ooh. So if I, theory, mount this thing right on there. I can't see. Oh my god, it's actually on. It's a different spline though, too long. And then the million dollar question is will that line up with the steering box inside the cab without hitting the booster? Ooh. For this to work, this is the, uh, that goes to the stock Nissan R50 box. If I could make this a little bit shorter, it would help. But, or even just a U joint. So this doesn't fit the Mazda stuff, of course. But uh, I do have one that does. Actually, I actually have two. Oh, actually, shoot. I've got three. I don't know, I forgot now. I don't know if that fits that one, because this one is smaller than that one. So oh, that'd be amazing if that actually fit. We gotta take that out. Here goes. So this is a full droop right now. Full droop. Steering wheel is straight. I'll go up. Suspension. Up. I don't notice any at all. But when I go down, it looks like a tiny one. In a little bit as it went up. As I drop it. And I shorten the shaft. Uh, the angle. Where's my level? Where's the level thing? So right now it's full droop. The angle of the tire is kind of hard. It's kind of bent. It's not exactly the same as the lower control arm or the upper. So yeah, it needs to be a steeper angle. So what the hell is that angle? Uh, 20 degrees is a full droop. So in order to do that, to get 20 degrees, I need to raise the rack more. Yeah, remember at full droop before, this was like touching. I was afraid of making it higher because it would hit. It's a big bumpy here, but I'm guess I'm gonna have to go higher. Maybe that's all I need. I don't know. Maybe I'm lucky. So let's try to make the mount higher. Okay, so in order to get a little more angle, I gotta raise the rack. Let's see if I raise the rack. Problem, it's gonna hit the sway bar. So not that big of a deal. I just gotta uh, raise the sway bar up a little bit. Cause I think. Oh, that's what it I, this is a full droop, remember? So when I'm at. Uh, I think that's the only time it gets that close. When I do uh, ride height. Yeah, when I do ride height. So actually there's about ride height right in the middle. So yeah, either way I gotta raise this sway bar up. I gotta lengthen this rock a little bit. I see tons of room here. Okay, so I've decided to do a notch. These to raise up the uh, cross member quite a bit <clears throat> but the problem with that is that this mount here hits the oil pan so I had to get creative on the bracket so 
What I've done is I've cut off this tab, which is very loud, and I've come up with a way. Can you see that? To bolt this thing. Drill a hole in here and put a bolt there because the cross member goes across here. <clears throat> so the bolt will probably go straight down. It's not ideal. I'd rather have it going this way. Which I probably could do if I moved over here. But the oil pan is kind of like in this area. So it's not a lot of room. The idea is to get this shaft right in that little what do you call it? The little canyon of the oil pan. So the oil pan's kind of right here. And it ends here. So this one's okay. This one can mount anywhere. So I think now that I've got that chopped, let's go ahead and put it back in the truck and we'll weld it on. We'll connect this to the cross member. Put a couple of tacks. I'm going to re recycle the suspension and see if uh, bump steer is better because this should raise this up. And then hoping, um, oh, I got to center the shaft. The shaft is not centered again. I had it centered where the center of the frame was lined up here on both sides. But I have a feeling that is not the center of the rack. So I need to cycle this thing. I think it's like three to one and find out where the true center is. Cause when I weld, yeah, I need to do that now because when I weld this thing, I need to weld it so that this thing is centered left and righty. I can't rely on, I had it like two and a quarter out on each side. But when I turn the wheels left and right, it seemed like it went more one way than the other. So let's figure that out. Okay, so I just figured out I can get 12 centimeters of travel maximum on each end. So six on each side. So it only moves six centimeters to left or right from center. So 12 centimeters exposed on each end. And that's going from the face here to the face of here. The face of here, the face of here. You can't really get any more because <clears throat> the, you can see this um, inner joint is a big fat head. That'll hit there. That's the stop. <clears throat> so, but um, I think I'm ready. I was trying to figure out kind of turns and stuff like that. That was a nightmare. 12, 12 centimeters. Six centimeters out on each side is the center. So I got to put this in. Find that spot. Somehow figure out. Yeah, line this up with something on the frame at the center. And then tack it on. So I've taken the uh, cross member down. Cut off the uh, cross member from the brackets. Decided to move it up. Um, it was like half an inch. And I'm moving it forward as much as possible. to Starting to hit the close as possible to the oil pan. So I cut all the welds off, removed some more of this old powder coat. This is where I had it before, roughly it was in the center. Well, I should say here. So I'm moving it up half an inch. I went ahead and welded a bar on there, just to make it easier instead of clamping on something. I'm gonna try to move it as far as possible. That's an inch and a half. If not, I'll go halfway. But uh, we'll just mock it up and see if it'll clear. I also, as you saw, I already raised up the other brackets. Um, let's see. Yes, yeah, so I just chopped. Oh, and I also chopped off the extra chunk down here. Obviously, it has to be up in this area, so I went ahead and shortened it. Let's put it back on the truck. Okay, here we go. It's freezing out here. So I got the cross member uh, brackets back on, and uh, I'm gonna try. Let's put it in the center. I'm gonna bolt the uh, rack back on. Oh. Let's see if we can, uh, no way I can do this. <laughs> this is gonna go like that. Uh, I can't film this. All right, I don't know what this is gonna look like. It's the first time filming upside down. So, let me just do it. So it needs to go over. I just measured this thing. I don't know how this well comes out on video. I need six centimeters on each side. It's centered about an inch over. 
Uh, this one's like an inch and an eighth. And this one's like an eighth. So it's a sixteenth half. Oh my god. And so this one's got six centimeters. So we can only go over sixteenth. So I just put a sharpie line so I could slide the whole rack towards the engine. Not that much. Reclamp it. Reclamp it. Remeasure. So uh that's less than an inch now. Did I go the wrong way? No, oh, that's good. That's like right on an inch. Oh, that's too much. Yeah, it's an inch. It's hard to tell. Okay, so I think that's as good as we're gonna get it. We're still not hitting the oil pan. So uh, I'm not hitting the oil pan. Oh god, it's close to the oil pan. Can't get my fingers in there. <laughs> I could still space this out if I had to, but the engine's gonna twist a little bit. Like, uh, what is that? Like quarter of an inch all the way through. Up here is pretty tight where that mount was. I redesigned, which may have been overkill. I don't even think it's even hitting the oil pan. Anyways, I chopped all that off. The first place it was going to hit was right here on this uh, engine frame, the motor mount for the frame. I don't know if you can even see in there. I'll show you from the top. Yeah, it's all clamped. I've moved to Ford, um, whatever this is, an inch and a quarter, compared to what it was before, and moved it up. Uh, the thickness of this, which was half inch, plus I moved it up this much. I think since I did the bunk test, let's go to the top. 